folks, and welcome to the Snowy's Camping Show. You are here with Ben and Lauren on this fine, sunny Monday. It is a, is a yeah, it's yes. Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Off to a good start. We've we done this before. To say days in our introduction because we've done this before. <laughs> and do you remember I said it's Tuesday, but this goes live on Monday, so people who are listening to it, oh, so I'm the one are listening now. to it on Monday. Well, don't you remember we went through this I a couple of episodes ago? Days in the. Anyway, whatever. We're already off topic. <laughs> we are. Happy we haven't Monday. even finished the intro yet. <laughs> Wherever you're listening to your podcast, don't forget to subscribe if you want to be kept up to date with what we're our random about. ramblings that get published each week. Yep. Uh, and also jump onto our Snowy's Camping Show Facebook group if you want to. Um, be involved in any of the conversation that sort of happens behind the scenes or if you have any thoughts or ideas. Start a new conversation if you want. Start a new conversation and same with your YouTube comments and things like that. Yep. So today we've sort of had this on on the plan for a little while and thought, oh, it's not super interesting, um, but it's tie-down straps. And then recently someone was like, I'd like to hear about tie-down straps. And we were like, okay. Yeah. It is interesting. It is. It's not really a right or wrong. So we just thought we'll yeah. just say what we do hmm. and hopefully it's helpful. Yeah. And some of the options we have at Snowy's to make it easy. I mean, you can get things like um, – you can get all this stuff. It's pretty generic, right? Like you can get it at hardware stores and all sorts of things like mm. that. And it's not necessarily like, um, you know, something that you would get at a hardware store is necessarily that different to what you would get at a camping shop. Mm. However, from my opinion, the things that you would get from a camping shop generally tend to come from brands that have taken into consideration the loads or the types of things that you'll be yeah. tying down that are specific to camping. Yeah. And they often take into consideration additional details like maybe colour coding because they know you might need a couple of different ones or silicon yep. pads and, and you know, different um, strengths for the sizes and stuff that you might get in generic yeah. hardware settings. So they're not all the same. A cheap one might suit yeah. you. But if you need something specific, then just have a bit of a look around because they're not usually – they're probably all roughly priced the same, really, mm. um, unless you go sort of really high end. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I think color. You mentioned color coding. That's yeah. a good one because I've got a bag of straps. <laughs> it's really hard, isn't I, it, I when they're all the sort of like one? that yellowy, orangey color, yeah. and you're not really sure. Yep. yep. And I think also, um, if you do get more of you know the tie down straps that come from camping brands and things like that from your camping stores. They tend to come with more of a product guarantee and a warranty than if you mm-hmm. were to get them somewhere more generic where they sort of maybe come from no name well, brands or they sort of mass produced, mass produced yeah. sort of more generic type things, yep. um, which yep. can sometimes be good if you, if you, that sort of consumer guarantee or that quality of product yeah. guarantee is important to you. Yep. So just check the label, but we'll cover off on some of the things like the load rating. Mm-hmm. Is an important one, but we, we've got that noted down here to um, under our considerations. But we're covering off on types mm. first. Um, now you've made some notes here, but the first one you said was tie downs, tie which, downs which or just, lashing straps. Yeah. I, I never know what to call them, but they're literally just the strap with the buckle. That's it. Okay, like like the fasty strap and the yeah, the little buckle, yep, the like little a cam buckle, cam buckle, <clears throat> basically. Yep. So the one, I've got a heap of um, straps. that have been around for a long time called fasty straps. And fasty straps. They're, okay, they're cool. Different colours, like the white ones, one meter, and it goes through to like a two meter one. I think it's like blue, and there's red and yellow and everything yeah. in between. And it's just a little thumb operated latch yep. that you you slide it through, and when you pull it back the other way, that cam naturally tightens, tightens down, down on yeah. the strap. So yeah. Now, uh, I think. Most of the fasty straps off the top of my head are added to like 400 kilos or something like that. Now, you wouldn't mm. use it for climbing or anything, yeah. but that's usually more than enough that you need for tying down on a roof. Um, yeah. I think that like they generally tend to be not too massive either. Like they're sort of, you know, that one inch, 28 mil-ish sort of width. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, we've got a, got a couple of those and they're, they're more in that one and a half to two 
maybe three metre max length in, mm-hmm. in that sort of size and style. Mm-hmm. Um, so see the yeah. summit do one as well. They call it the bomber strap. Bomber tie down, bomber I tie think down, it's sorry. Cool. Yeah. And that's got the little silicon pad on it. So that's one of the considerations if you're of using – um, well, I've got some that came with like my bike carrier. They're not the, the bomber ones. They just came mm-hmm. with it, but they've got a silicon pad on it because of wrapping it around a bike frame. And yeah. You just need that silicon pad to, to protect the metal from it, rubbing together. Yeah, like and if something's under tension, that metal buckle is obviously going to be pressing onto yep. whatever it's, you know, resting against, whether that be your roof rack or your car or yep. the product itself. So having that little silicon pad is a nice little buffer. Yep, yeah. They um, do do some that are um, – a heavier duty and I can't think what they're called because I think I'm pretty sure the bomber the bomber tie downs are all grey, but the actual buckle and silicon and the stamped lettering on them and stuff are different colours. But then they do the other ones that have the full silicon cover that goes completely over the buckle. Yeah. And they're different colours. So that's for boats and that sort of thing where because mm. you kind of throw that buckle and inevitably <laughs> it ends up kind of hanging. Or like somewhere or hitting something. You're talking about like kayaks and canoes kayaks and stuff. Where you don't, yeah. Especially um, sort of high-end kayaks where you don't want to scratch it up fiberglass. Mm. Um, having that entire metal piece encased in the silicon means that if it, it just bounces off things rather yeah. than dents it. Yeah. The fasty straps are a steel, whereas some of the other ones, like the, the ones I got with my um, push bike carrier, mm. are well, I think it's like a cast iron. Yeah, so right. they're quite heavy. Okay. So there is different types. But the fasty ones are cool because they're not too heavy when you're mm-hmm. throwing them around. Um, and they've still got that 400 kilo rating. So yeah. I can speak firsthand that I quite, I've had folk, these good. for more than 10 years, 10, 15 years. Mm. Um, I have worn through a couple of them just uh, over time with it being on the roof. Um, one thing was rubbing against another and it's yeah. caused a bit of a, a, a section that of it to rub through. That little frictions, whatever. just cut it off and now it's shorter so I can still yeah. use it. That's really good. Um, but yeah, just check. Um, I mean, they, these are really good cause they're compact. They're easy mm-hmm. to use because you just loop it around and just put it through the buckle, tighten the buckle and you're done. Yeah. You don't have to tie knots or anything. They're yep. compact to pack in the car. Just mm-hmm. have a look at, there probably is some, some really basic ones out there that aren't load rated. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the load ratings are going to be based on the weakest point of the strap, which could be the buckle. It could also be the stitching. So if yeah. it's, it's poor quality stitching, that's the bit that's going to fail. Mm-hmm. Um, but just have a look at, you know, the, the range out there, the fasty straps and the bomber tie downs from Cedar Summit um, are all really good quality really straps. Really good quality ones, yeah. So you can certainly say that they work pretty well. Now, even though those sort of tie downs use a cam buckle, there are a slightly different model that are called cam buckle tie downs and they've got – they're two pieces essentially. So they're like oh, a yes. shorter piece – and a longer piece, and they both have hooks on either yep. end, yep. but the shorter piece also has the cam buckle attached. Yeah. And I personally find these ones really handy because mm. when you have just the normal tie-down lash, whatever you want to call them, if you have to physically tie one end, like to me they're good if you're looping something around a roof rack or something where you don't need to tie it mm-hmm. or anchor it in a particular point. Whereas mm-hmm. if you have to do that, especially with the webbing straps, trying to get a good tie on something can be a bit ha- like tricky. Yep. And then you've got to worry about tensioning and all that jazz. So, yeah, I like those cam buckle tie downs or whatever the two piece ones because yeah. it just allows you to hook and hook and then pull it as tight as you can and you don't have to worry about you know it's good for trailers or if you have um roof rack styles that have the tubular sections yep. or the the side rails on them and stuff yep so i use them for my swag for yeah. the reason that it's quicker uh, mm-hmm. than the loop style if you have to if i had to tie my swag down with the loop style ones the first one we're referring yeah. to i'd have to go over the back of the swag, round the the roof rack, back over the swag, round the roof rack on the other side, and then tighten it. So it's a, yeah, it's a right. complete loop. Mm-hmm. But I've now got a, a couple of straps um, that they, were, they came with something. But they're one end is a big heavy duty um, hook that's yep. covered in like a silicon. Yeah. And then yeah, shorter piece with a cam buckle on it. Yeah. And then the other end, just as you said, another heavy duty hook on it with a long length of rope. And I put those little eyelets that you can fit in the M8 channels. Oh of, yeah. Of um, yeah. Because I've got a flatbed roof rack Mm -hmm. and they just sit in the middle of my roof rack. So I can put the swag up there. I can reach over the swag, hook one side through the loop there, hook the other side on the other side of my roof rack and just tighten it down. So it's it's So you're talking about eyelet bolts, right? And so you have, do you have like a piece of T channel and then you screw an eyelet bolt into that? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I don't, 
they've probably got a, a bunch of different names, but it's it's cast iron rated. It's got a, a, a working load limit rating on it. When you say um, cast it, iron, do you mean galv? Was it might be galvanized, but it's it's um like it's not a, a bent metal. It's actually like a a um not, like it's cast. It's cast. Yeah, yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah, uh, but it has a working load limit on it, and in the bottom is an M8 nut. And yeah. my roof rack has got lots of um, channels, channels yeah. which fit M8 nuts So, yeah, M8, yeah, that's great. Okay, so, cool. So I just yeah. drop it in there and you tie it from the top mm-hmm. and they, there's two of them that just sit in roughly the right spot for my, yeah. my double swag so I can yeah. just throw it on there and loop it over and, and does the job. Yeah. That's really good. And it's just quicker than feeding it over. Sometimes you can't quite reach over to the middle, so you've got to go to the other side of the car, feed it over, throw it back over the other side, get yeah. back around the other side, and if you're doing it day after day, so much easier if you can just jump up, go hook, tighten, hook, mm-hmm. tighten. It's just a bit quicker. Yeah. So I don't. I think you gave this. You said it's a cam buckle tie down. There's, yeah, there's but probably I don't not, know. There's, there's probably not a specific name for it. These they just have a little thumb operated cam buckle in the middle. Mm-hmm. Um, not a ratchet. Not That's a ratchet. That's a different one. Just mm-hmm. a, it's just a buckle that tightens. The little tab that you push down. Two big loops yeah, on yeah. the ends. And once again, you get them at hardware shops and all sorts. It's really handy for trailers, yeah. and you just need a solid place to be able to hook it onto. Yeah, for sure. Um, ratchet strap is a kind of same thing, but so it's got all the same things as what we described here. Generally though, it does have the hooks on each end, but the ratchet strap instead of a cam buckle has got one of those a things. That you, yeah. Like you loop. Like a lever mechanism. Yeah, it's you, sort of like, um, like a, what am I thinking of? I was like a, a rent, like a ratchet set. <laughs> Of course, it's, it's like a ratchet, ratchet strap. There. Yeah, where yeah, it just free moves in one way, and then you can just lock it yeah, back the other. You can tighten it so far yourself. You loop it through. You sort of tighten it as much as you can um, firmly, and then mm. you start to pull this ratchet, and it loops around and just tightens up for you. So, mind you, I consider myself to be a fairly capable woman. Like mm. I can do a lot of stuff and do it by myself and have no issues, and generally don't <laughs> need help from anyone. But I cannot work out how to use a bloody ratchet. I just can't work it out. To get because, it started. Yeah, and also then, you know, like you have to like unlock it and then you know how when you ratchet it up it sort of winds itself up yeah. so you don't have this excess strap. And yeah. I just I can't. I can't yeah. work it out. It's, it's been shown to, kind of, to me and to, I still have no idea. We kind of pull it through and then you need to ratchet a few times before it gets purchased and keeps yeah. going around. So. They're not that complicated. I'll show you one day. It's right? okay. But in saying that, I don't actually use them. And the main reason I don't use them or probably don't like them is because that ratchet is quite heavy. It's really heavy, isn't so it? So if you end up dropping it and it hits your car or something, you're going to dent dent the car and you can't really put silicon over the top of that. So um, it's you probably can get small not versions. necessary if – because they're, they're quite hardcore and yep. they are generally tend to be quite wide and mm. heavy duty and they're rated for loads that are far beyond what your average camper probably yep. needs to secure. Um, if you're towing a trailer. I think it's relevant for a trailer. Yeah, if you're towing a trailer or if you have maybe say you have a camper trailer or, or something like that where um, when you pack your trailer away maybe it's a bit old or the cover's not as tight or, you know, you just need a bit of extra support in keeping everything in, yep. stuff like that, yep. um, there's a value to it. But um, the other thing that apparently they're quite good for is that if you are needing to tie down a whole bunch of different sorts of things, like it may, potentially if you've got bikes or a bunch of random odd stuff, there's not really going to be even tensioning across it. Mm-hmm. Apparently ratchet strap stuff or rat, the actual ratchet mechanism is a lot more beneficial for okay. stuff like that. Yeah, okay. Because you're not just relying on your manual tensioning. Yep. Um, and so therefore you're going to get a more even tension mm. across the whole line, which is harder to achieve when you're just doing it manually if it's, a weird shape or you've got lots of yeah. lots so of think, stuff to I think we probably um what well, I guess what we're saying is it's really good for largest like a, if it's right across a trailer yeah. and you're tying a heap of stuff down. Yeah. It's good for those sort of long sort of spans. But if you're just tying, say, a table or a swag onto a yeah. a roof rack or a bag. They'll, they'll or still do the job, they'll be fine. Potentially overkill. Yeah. If you, if that's all you need it for, then you don't need to to buy a, a ratchet. And then if you're not using it, it's more to store in the car as well. It's a bit mm-hmm. bulkier. Mm-hmm. Not huge, but just a little bit more. Yeah, the space is premium. The thing that uh, the thing that is good with ratchet straps, though, is that if you're so inclined, 
when you set up camp, you can set up like a slack line. <laughs> if it's rated as such. If it's rated as such. But thin, generally you can get away with line. most of it. No, like um, you can get ratchet straps that are like, you know, four inches wide. Jesus, what are you talking about? Three inches down? wide. <laughs> I don't anyway, know. Sorry, I'm just having a stab now. That's fine. You were supposed to say something before. You were supposed to say I don't tie anything down. And well, then I was don't tie anything down you. because. So I just had images of you driving down the, the road with nothing, <laughs> stuff loaded on the sprinter, nothing tied down. And every time you get to camp, you go, I can't work out why there's nothing left on the car because you don't tie it down, Lauren. But, and but that's when just I me said being to you, stupid, though. You're just saying you don't actually tie anything on the outside of the when car. When I said to you, you, I don't tie anything down, that didn't mean that I was just chucking it up like. Benny Hinn style or Beverly Beverly Hills family my style or whatever. My wife and my family be doing a face palm at the moment going, Dad's doing stupid yeah, jokes Yeah, just again. I don't have yeah. anything to physically no tie down. No one else finds it funny, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> we find you funny, Ben. It's okay. You don't have to make me feel better. Um, um, the next one's fail safe, ropes. If yeah. You need to know a few knots. You need to know a clove hitch. Know, you say fail safe, but I don't know if it's fail safe really. If you, fail safe if like, you know a few knots. Ropes are bloody tricky. So, well, with the cam buckle, there's always a – I'm trusting that someone's sewn that properly. I'm trusting that the buckle's not going to fail. If I've got a good rope, I've got some um, old accessory climbing ropes, a rated climbing rope that I've had for years and years and mm. years, and I know if I tie that properly, it's going nowhere. If you've got a really good quality rope and you know what you're doing, for sure, but I always find tying stuff down with ropes a bit hard to tension properly. Do you know how to tie truckers hitch? I do not. <laughs> so, so you need to tie. Is that it. the same as like a bow line? Is that the same? Oh, uh, that's. You, you don't know, I'm do just going to stop you there. <laughs> no, a but are line. you talking about. No, a- what do you mean I don't know? No, it's nothing like a bow line. <laughs> <laughs> a bow line's. But are you talking like about when you have, a, have, a, have the rope and then you tie like that little doodly loopy thing off the side so then when you put the length through something and then you pull it up and then you thread it back through that loopy thing and then you can yank it down and it's sort of that's a trucker's hitch it's not a bowline okay a bowline just does a loop in the end of the end of the rope but let's not go too far into that because if we start talking about knots we'll be completely off tangent i know but basically i like knots i do know because that's how a lot of our guy ropes are rigged up because we use like proper proper rope for our guy ropes on our massive shelter oh yeah so you kind of to, to do a trucker's hitch, you kind of take yeah. a loop and then poke a bit through and then loop it back up. Back, it's kind of this loopy kind yeah, of thing, yeah. and then you can. It's, it's like a little. It's, um, it's like a. Um, what do you three, call it? Uh, three, like a two or three way um, pulley system. Pulley system. Kind system of thing. That's yeah. what we're thinking of. So yeah, the, but still, you still have to sort of tie that off. Do you know what I mean? A clove hitch. Yeah. Okay. A clove hitch is what you use in vertical rescue and stuff. Like it's it's a solid. Yeah. Knot. I just maybe it's maybe it's because I have. Little hands. I don't know. No, I use cam buckles because they're quick, but I do have moments where I think I, I miss just you tying this ropes. down with a rope. Yeah. And you can just. And then what if you get little rope fibers on your hands and oh, I don't know. If I'm you just use, not, if you're I using just, a sizal rope, you probably get rope fibers. But if you're using a Kern Mantle accessory rope, which I've got, like it's probably, I don't know, it must be eight, eight mil. We're talking Kern good, quality rope. Rope. Get good quality, quality rope. Good quality rope. Get a decent rope. Yeah. What's, Kern, it slides, what's Kern Mantle? Is that a brand? Kern. Kern Mansell is the way the ropes made. So it's got a core and then a – Or like a, a, a woven sheath, like a giant paracord. It's got is a sheath sort of what you're over saying? the top of a core, yeah, like, basically. Like gigantic paracord, Cl- sort of, like climbing rope. Climbing rope, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know, paracord. Not quite sure how paracord is made, made up, but um, Kim would know. Mm. Next door, he's a paraglider, but um, normal, yeah, just climbing rope. The size of okay. ropes, that twisted stuff. Yeah. Climbing rope is hasn't got that twisted look. It's got a sheath over the top and inside there's a whole bunch of fibres and a bit more technology mm. gone in it and it's rated usually. But the rating doesn't matter because it's well over the top of what you need to tie stuff down yeah. but it's just really handy to work with and nice to work with. And you don't need a really thick rope if you get good You can get other rope. rope, can't you, that if you like want to loop an end around or something, you can – make a little hole in the side by untwisting it and then shove the bit of rope back in and then you pull it and it goes super tight. You can you can put a, yeah, there's a name for that. That's kind of going back into scout Why are you laughing? Craft. Because I don't know why you'd go to that effort because it takes ages to make. You, you could do that if you want it. If you used it all the time and you had Kern Mantle rope, you can untwist it and kind of loop it back around to create mm. like a loop in the end and there is a way to do that, yeah. Okay. But you could, if you wanted a loop in the rope, you could use your bowline. Okay. You just tie a loop. Anyway, um, <laughs> we've probably got way too deep into ropes here. Yeah, probably. <laughs> if you want to use ropes, it's a it's a cheap way to do it. Um, 
learn how to tie a clove hitch mm-hmm. um, and learn how to tie a trucker's hitch. And that's pretty like, much all you need. If you want to use rope, it's a cheap way to do it, but is a good quality rope in cost comparable with lashing straps or cam well, buckle straps or whatever? Like why is it why is going no, with rope cheaper? It's a good question. Well, I guess you could buy like a 10-metre rope mm-hmm. uh, and you don't have to use the whole length. But you've got ten meters if you if you do need it to go back and forward over a bunch of stuff. I mean, I've used my rope to tie down like corrugated sheeting from my shed when I took it to the recycling, and yeah. I also use it to tie down a stove stand. I just have mm. a bunch that I just have to kind of loop up and tuck in and don't use. So okay. it's a cheap way in terms of you could buy a big length and use it for multiple things um, per meter. I think you're probably talking I don't know one to three dollars per meter mm-hmm. potentially for this rope. So I guess it could. Cost is probably comparable. Depends how you want it, but and do you generally have to tie and retie, or do you just have like, for example, your trucker's hitch? Do you just have that permanently in the end of the rope, or would you have to untie the whole rope and then retie it every time you want to use it? Well, you can tie a trucker's hitch such that you just pull a knot and it pull one side of it, and the whole thing mm. comes undone. So generally, a trucker's hitch you retie. Okay, you can leave one end of the rope anchored, but usually with a rope, it takes longer. Than, yeah. a, than, a, than the, the tie downs like the cam buckle um, or the ratchet tie downs that we're talking about before because you mm-hmm. do need to tie it off, mm-hmm. loop it over, loop it back. Like it, it's it's a bit more of a process. And if you do it, if you are using, say, a, a 10 meter rope and you're tying down somewhere you only need two meters, you've still got to pull yeah. eight meters of rope through. So it's a little bit more mucking around. Yeah. But I, I like knots and ropes. So I quite enjoy the process of tying stuff down and cool. then admiring my work afterwards with. The rope on the top. True scout at heart. Yep. Anyway, that's probably way too much information on ropes. Just learn a trucker's hitch and a clove hitch. Mm-hmm. Bungee cords Bungee and cords. oki straps. <clears throat> I don't use these. I'm always scared I'm going to smash myself in the face because they because of the, <laughs> because of the stretch in them, right? I We used to have a lot of them around as a kid and I was just obsessed with them because they're sort of just interesting and cool to play with. But they well, were elastic the, strap with two hooks. Yeah. Just Oki straps. <laughs> Surely there is someone else out there that always thought Oki straps were cool when they were a kid. Please validate Some, me. Someone will jump in. Um, but, yeah, and I never put too much weight in them because, you know, that classic um, multiple strands of elastic cover sheathed in that woven, yeah. you know, tartan-ish looking whatever. And then I bought – a really good quality one one time when I was on a biking trip. A rock, a, a rock strap? Was it rock strap? No, it wasn't rock okay. strap. It was an elect, elect, elastic hockey strap thing from a hardware store, but it was like a high quality one. Okay. Um, when I was on a bike trip and I was in a bind and it was amazing. Okay. Had it for a couple of years and it's super strong. I think maybe for small instances like that, I, I can see an hockey strap being really useful for like a, a pannier on a bike where you mm-hmm. just want to quickly just tighten something down. Yeah. It's not tied on top of a car. Um, but I don't use them for. Oh, I, w- top of I the don't car. think I would rely on them for the top of the car. Realistically, I mean because they're elastic, and generally they're not really load rated, or their load capacity isn't as reliable as straps and alternatives mm. and stuff. And because they're elastic, they move a lot, mm. and so there's going to be a lot of dynamic mm. stress and strain on them. And I think potentially they would come in handy, like you said, for things like on bikes or motorbikes or um, a lot smaller things. Mm-hmm. That, like if you've got jerry cans or something in a in a jerry can holder in the back and an hockey strap over the top of that or yeah. if you've got a trailer and you're tying some stuff down but there's a bit that rattles or whatever and it's got, you know, cage walls or whatever, just as a, a bit of an extra when you need some smaller. Yeah. I think you made a good point there that they're quite good for just securing small things. So in the back of a four-wheel drive within a trailer, if you just yeah. want to secure something to a corner, to a side against something else, yeah. an hockey strap can be a quick and easy way to just quickly just loop something around it just to yeah. secure it there. But I wouldn't recommend it on a roof rack unless you're just tying down pool noodles or something that really don't have any weight. Yeah. Um, but if you're tying down something that weighs a bit with hockey straps, it's always going to have give in it. So if that forward drive's kicking around much, then it's there's always going to be movement in there. So yeah. Yeah. For sure. Cargo nets. I bought a cargo net once. I think I only used it once. Yeah. Never used it again because it was elastic. Once again, same with hockey straps. It, it's got hooks on the sides and that's all mm-hmm. very good. But as soon as you add um, 
any weight. Like it's probably good if I wanted to hold down a bunch of pillows in the in the um, trailer. Um, but they're not all elastic, right? Well, or no, the one that I, you maybe, bought maybe there elastic. is some that are. Yeah, you're right. Actually, there is some that I think are just a rope. So it must be all be different. But I bought an elastic one, mm. and I really didn't find it that useful because I couldn't tighten it down enough to hold anything in place. Yeah, and in an, I think I bought it thinking. Maybe it will secure things if, if something happens. And sometimes but I find when it's like that more netting style, things can sort of poke up in it and then after a drive somewhere and you're trying to unload. It's all and hooked up. All hooked up and, yeah. you know, bits and pieces. I have seen, I personally don't have one, but I have seen getting around a fair bit an alternative to a cargo net. It's like a mesh tarp but it has webbing woven in a grid through it oh, and yeah. it's got eyelets all around the side. Yeah. Still works on the same premise. Okay. I can see that maybe a cargo net could go, if you had a tarp, tie mm-hmm. a tarp down, you just need to stop it flapping around. You could put an elastic cargo net over the top of that. Oh, yeah, that's If a good you're point. securing sand or something. If you, yeah. But, I mean, we're getting into home maintenance now. Yeah. <laughs> Stepping away from camping. But, uh, I mean, a tarp, we've talked tarp about tarps before. A tarp has a before. value. There's so many uses for a tarp. So many uses. So, and I um, think um, often a really common question that um, that I get from people is, well, is there a waterproof bag for this? Because I want to put it on my roof rack and yeah. what if it's – and it's like, well, no, there's not. And you could probably maybe try and fit it in this or, yep. you know, but realistically not. And that might cost you 130 40 bucks or whatever, but a good quality tarp that's waterproof won't cost you that yeah. much. Just wrap, wrap it yeah. up in a tarp. Just I, load your roof up, cover it in a tarp, yeah. waterproof. I did that with my double swag on, a, on my, my trip earlier in the year actually mm-hmm. and there was rain forecast and it bucketed down like so much that we were, we could barely see the road in front of us on, yeah. the, on the highway somewhere in, somewhere in WA. I can't remember where. Anyway, we knew the rain was coming. So my double swag, which is a so canvas swag rolled up in a canvas, uh, a, not a canvas, in a um, swag bag. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Synthetic swag bag, reasonably waterproof. So light showers and stuff were fine, but this is going to be really heavy rain. So mm. I just rolled it up like a like a rice roll. Okay, like yeah, like pack the swag up, and then put it on top of the tarp. <clears throat> excuse me, and then started to roll, folded the sides in, rolled it all the way up, and then just put that on the roof, mm. and it stayed dry. Yeah, and this this is really really heavy rain. It was yeah. only twenty minutes or something of heavy rain, but yeah. really heavy. There was just water everywhere. Like if you stood outside for five seconds you were drenched yeah but I, that's the tarp that i just had in the in the bin bag yeah and, I, and that's the only time i used it on that trip but if i didn't i think the swag probably would have been wet in the tent yeah <laughs> because sure. there was so much water and would have taken a while to dry it because the canvas would have gotten wet yeah and it's pretty i think they're pretty versatile as well like if you've got something like a trailer or you've got quite a lot of gear on your roof racks if you weren't going to use a tarp do you think it would be fair to say you would use a lot more tie down straps? Whereas if you had a tarp that you could pull tightly over everything, you could potentially use less straps because you're securing something across. But potentially. I was about to ask you a similar question because I've also got a rooftop bag that I had used in the past and I've stopped using it recently because I actually found it muckier to try and get everything in this rooftop bag. Yeah. That's essentially like a, I guess a it's deluxe like a, tarp yeah, that yeah. everything goes in and it's got this rain cover that goes over the top. Yeah. So you could throw a tarp over the top in the same sense, but I don't like doing that because it it starts to flap around. Okay. So unless you can sort of tighten every little corner of that tarp, so it's a really neat bunch of stuff you've got on your roof and you can mm-hmm. neatly tuck the tarp in underneath and then tie it down, that's fine. But the reality is it's not how it is. I've got a, a – double swag and then an RV5, they're different lengths. If I put hmm. a tarp over that, there's kind of a bit in the middle where the, the tarp flaps around. And as soon as it starts flapping around, the wind gets under it and then it starts to pull out from the ropes. And before yeah. you know it, this tarp's like, you've seen it before, seen people it. driving down the highway <laughs> yeah. and this tarp funny. just ballooned up and flapping yeah, yeah, around yeah. on the car. So yeah. I would actually say it's better to, um, and that's why I just wrapped my swag up mm-hmm. in uh, in a tarp because the tent was going to be, tent was rolled up and was going to be pretty dry anyway. Yeah. Um, the roll individual items up in the tarp. So I rolled the swag up in the tarp and then the tie downs went on top of the tarp yeah. over the top of that. Yeah, right. That's my my thoughts. Um, but yeah, tarp over the top of everything might work, work for short trips, but if you're yeah. doing 100Ks down the highway, that tarp is probably going to be a balloon pretty Gross. soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. This is going to be a quick episode. We're about halfway through. Yeah. 
Uh, then well, it, probably the rest of it will be this. pretty fast. Sure. I've already talked a bit about breaking strength, so just just check the ratings on the um, yeah. on the on the tie down strap and make sure it is actually a a, a rating for the entire strap, not just the webbing, but. Because my understanding is like your breaking strength generally refers to the the physical webbing itself, whereas your working load limit refers to the actual capacity of the strap in its entirety. Because yeah. you know your your the breaking strength of the webbing might actually be more or yeah. higher than the working load capacity of well, the buckle. Well, it probably should be. I would think. Yeah. So um, it's like if you're looking at, you know, something and it's like, oh, 4,000 kilos webbing or whatever, that yep. might not necessarily be the same yeah. as the working load. Because it's got to be stitched to go over the, the cam buckle or the buckle or the ratchet or whatever. Yeah. And then that ratchet's got, got to join somewhere or have some sort of tensioning device. Yeah, or so you've the, got hooks if you're yeah. using the hook straps. So just be wary, have a look and just, just question what are these – Limits actually yep. for the buckle itself, or just mm-hmm. for a component of the makeup. Generally, the the what's stamped on there will be the limit for the strap. The strap as in its entirety. In, in its entirety. Yeah. Yep. I just had a bit of a yawn. Then you did. Um, yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm bored. not bored. I'm boring. It went on too long about ropes. <laughs> uh, um, length. Yeah, length. Look, I think if you go straps, we talked about rope length before. Um, I think if you want a bunch of different lengths. Get a bunch of different straps. It's probably a better way to do it. Yeah, I've got totally. one meter straps and I use the one meter lengths to tie down like like I just need to tighten one side wanna, of my stove. You don't want like yeah. you said with the ropes, you don't want to be pulling an extra four meters of length through that you don't no. need. And inevitably and you, yeah. it's a bit like the tarp, you tuck it in somewhere, and then it but then halfway loose down the road it's come loose. And you, off. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that can be a bit dangerous. But also don't go too short in in the sense that you want a bit of a tail. Yeah. You don't want to be, you know, cutting it fine. No, yeah, you need a bit of give just in case it slips also, through a bit. Because also you're going to have to be holding on to that to pull it through to tension it properly. Yeah. So, you, yeah, you make sure you can. don't want to be relying on two centimetres between your fingers <laughs> to try and tension your, <laughs> yeah, your, um, for sure. your type. So, so having a good couple of sizes. Yeah, probably just enough to be able to tie a half hitch just to, I, even though the cam buckles supposedly are rated mm. to 400 kilos, I always finish off with a half hitch Yeah. so that, that just stops it from sliding through. Yeah. So if you've got an extra ten or so centimeters, <clears throat> excuse me, then um, then that's good just to be able For to cut sure. that half inch. So. Agreed. But a whole and range of lengths from from sort of one point five through to say uh, uh, maybe three meters is probably a good range. And getting have. different colors, like we touched in before, yep. makes it super easy if you're fishing around in your your strap bag or your yeah. you know crate or whatever. Absolutely. Um. So the tightening mechanisms just be take into consideration what tightening mechanism you want to use. Yeah, I mean the cam buckles generally they're good. They're good. You just got to use a little bit of muscle to tighten it down. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing I thought interesting, which was raised um, by someone else, was that you can't over tighten cam buckles because you're really just limited by your own strength. Whereas yeah, when you're point. using a ratchet strap, you can over tighten. And so depending on what your load is, you mm. could potentially be putting additional stress or pressure on your load that might cause damage. You know, like yeah. if, hypothetically if it's a tent, you know, maybe you've got an instant up tent or something like that and you're over tighten it and you're compressing that frame and it's putting strain on the little plastic knuckles and mm. stuff. You can bend things. Bend yep. things or, yeah, so Not just to take mention it into the, consideration. The anchor points as well. If you've got a hook somewhere on a roof rack, it's tightened down but – where it's actually looped to if there's just a cage, if you've got a cage on your roof rack, Mm -hmm. you don't want to tighten it too much on that cage because eventually that metal is going to give. So just consider where it's looped to. But I think that's another reason why I like cam buckles because you can just tighten it yourself. I do find, I'll mention too, with with tightening the cam buckles, you pull, if you've got a a long cam buckle that kind of goes over one end of something and then back up the other side, kind of tighten it, but then you kind of need to pull it to tighten the other end too. You kind of need yeah, to, to pull it all through and then do another tighten to so give it a bit of a wriggle to yeah. Yeah, pull the tension through. Otherwise you end up with one side of the swag tightened down and the other one sitting up high, but then when that kind of evens out over time, you end up with potentially something that's not as tight as you wanted. So yeah. so just kind of yeah, pull it pull it all through. Um, and actually loading up the roof, we've talked heaps about vehicle weights and stuff previously, but um, Roof load limit. We always like to and say. And your roof rack limit. They're not the same thing. That's Just right. triple check. Absolutely. A lot of cars have got like a 70 kilo 
weight limit. So by the time you add roof rack and everything on there, you're smiling at me like, don't go into weights. No, 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 I wasn't. I was just thinking because I know we had Harry on the podcast a couple of weeks ago and I follow him on socials. Mm. And in one of his Instagram stories, he posted a photo of potentially something like a Toyota Camry. Oh, yeah. Maybe with like a 80 kilo hard shell rooftop (laughs) then on it, cruising down onto the beach. Wow. With maybe 10 centimetres of clearance. That's crazy. Um, and so I was just when we're thinking about roof load limits and roof rack limits, how they're not the same thing, yeah. just I, that picture came into my head and it crack, <laughs> cracked me up. Well, it's very easy to think it doesn't fit in the car, throw it on the roof, but just stop and have a think about how much you're throwing on the roof because that weight will add up really quickly. Yeah. And also think about how you load it on the roof too. Don't just mm-hmm. put it all on one side. Try and even it out and think about wind resistance as well. Ideally, a swag would go across the roof in terms of wind resistance, uh, in terms of water when ingress. When you say sorry. across, so are you talking from side to side? Not lengthways, side to side, yeah. Really? Well, I would have put it no, no, too, I would have put it I lengthways. Haven't finished, oh, I haven't sorry. finished okay. if you want to stop water ingress. So if okay, you've got it lengthways, the, the water goes straight in the, the coiled this, end. But yeah, if yeah. you have it across, you've got this massive windbreak on your roof, right? Yeah. If you're putting it in front or behind of something that's already there, then that doesn't matter. But I do put it lengthways, but then in the instance of rain, I think I'd better put a tarp over it to, to protect it or make sure it's in a bag. Okay. So are you, t- do you, when you, do you put it side to side or front to back? Front to back, lengthways. Okay. But you're saying if it's really raining and you don't necessarily trust your water protection bag or tarp or whatever, yep. you put it side to side. Well, I don't. I've always just put it lengthways and front to back. Sorry. <laughs> and just put a tarp over okay. it to protect the ingress of okay. water because that water is then just being forced straight into the, you know, you know what I mean? Like the, the mm-hmm, rolled mm-hmm. in. So you've got all that water going straight yeah. in, unless you've got it in a bag or something. Yeah. Um, and I'm assuming that would only really be relevant if you had a platform. Like if you only have a two or three racks, you wouldn't be able to put yeah, your swag. You'd have to put it lengthways. Yeah. I've got a, a platform. Rack, so, and you yeah. would generally load from the center. Wouldn't you? I go each side. So one side's the swag mm-hmm. and then in front of that I've got just enough space to put my stove stand. Mm-hmm. And then on the other side is the RV5 and that goes the full length. Yeah. Uh, and so I, it's balanced. It's it's balanced. Yeah, I've got way each side. It's probably – the RV is perhaps a little bit heavier than the swag so I've got all the kids' sleeping gear and everything in there but we're talking five or ten kilos which is nothing in a in a you know weight of the car. Um, one thing I, I thought I better not forget to mention, I didn't note it down, I thought I better not forget to mention it, but that's okay. pool noodles, right? Yeah. Easy to strap on the roof, but incredibly handy um, because they can act as a, a protection for some things. So, yeah. yeah. So I had a period when I was traveling when I had my fishing rods out all the time and I don't have fishing rod holders on the front. They, yeah. they stick inside a little holder thing in the back of the car. They're not easy to get in and out, but I didn't want to pack it away all the time. So I just kind of put it on top of the um, – RV tent and then just put pool noodles between each yeah, roof rack and then tied it right. down and it just held the, the reels upright and they all just sat neatly on top of the, the tent. That's cool. So the pool noodles are an easy thing to – the kids use them, but they're yeah. also really handy for packing and just good idea. rolling things on and off the roof as well. So, yeah, that can be a handy addition. And obviously when you put your RV on, it's not hanging over your windshield, is it? No, because my roof rack's like two point. Two meters. Okay. So it's within the boundaries of that. But that's a good point. Don't hang stuff over your windshield. You create a massive updraft and you end up with it eventually yep. behind you on the road. Yeah. Plus, it, you know, there's a lot of, like, if it's sticking out that far, there's a lot of give in the, in the, the tent. If it's a tent or an yeah. RV, it's flapping around a lot. You really need, um, if it's an RV tent, you really kind of want a support point at a, a, to divide it into thirds. Yeah, mine's obviously supported all the way along. Mm-hmm. Um, but also legal reasons, overhanging. You don't want it overhanging the back too far. If it goes out too far, you need to put a, a flag on yeah. it to, to show that it's overhanging. But it's better to overhang off the back than the front, if if you don't have an option. Yeah, I guess so. I'm not. I haven't actually thought about that. I've mm. never been in a situation. Because if you think about it, and the wind's coming. Like up your bonnet and then up your windscreen. Yeah. And whatever is above your windscreen is getting the full force of that updraft. Yeah, it could be. I guess so. Hopefully, with camping gear, you haven't got something that's you don't so have anything that you too massive. Hanging no. that far out anyway. So. It would mostly only be things like kayaks, maybe, or like really large RV tents if your car is shorter or smaller. Yeah. 
I have had a, so I've had a kayak I met before that was a full length of my patrol, but that was yeah. literally like bumper to out past the rear. So I just yeah. needed to fit that on as, as best I could to make sure it was yeah. naked. So, yeah. I was reading, and this is probably like a, a talking point, that you should put your lighter items on the bottom. If you're lo- loading up your roof rack, you should put your lighter items on first. Where did you read this? It was just in a some article written by a tie down company about how to load your roof. I've got no and idea. And I was like, I reread it a couple of times to make sure that I wasn't mistaken, but that surprised me. It doesn't make sense to me because the whole idea is to keep weight low. You're already yeah. on the roof. So. I mean, the only thing I could think of is that potentially that's the advice they're giving so the lighter stuff doesn't, you know, come loose and flap away because it's weighed down by the heavy stuff. But still, I was just like, mm, yeah, I don't know. Possibly. If I go back to the pool noodle example, if I didn't tie them down at the end, there was one stage where I was driving along and the pool noodles had just, I think <laughs> I was driving along and they were just sticking upright yeah. on top of the car. So if they went underneath the tent. Then they'd be weighed down. Yeah. I guess in some instances, maybe there's some relevance in that. Maybe. Yeah, I just thought sure. it was a weird thing. And someone, I was like, hmm, someone can tell me yeah, whether maybe that's someone can shed true or false. Yeah. Anyway. Um, once again, we said we'll be quick. And I think we've. I don't know. Probably, uh, hopefully, not bored people about how to tie stuff on a roof rack. Mm. Um, and this is all just our experience, or probably mine, because you don't tie anything down. No. Um, I'm sure there's heaps of other tips and tricks out there. Absolutely. Every time I set up my car, I tie something on differently. Yeah. Um, a different way or look for a different bracket or some other way to do it. There's no hard, fast way. It's just what works with your kit and where everything yeah. else fits in your car and what you need to take on and off easily all the time. And if you're someone who ties down on your roof racks a lot or if you take a trailer all the time and you're tying down stuff, I don't know what you use. What do you love? What's your go-tos? Yeah. Um, brands at work for you. Do yep. you like ropes? Can you tie a trucker's hitch? I'm going to teach you after this. <laughs> tie a trucker's hitch. And a clove hitch. I can't believe you don't know how to tie a trucker's hitch. I, you just, I feel like you would have you known just, that. No, you don't a, know. You just, you just fold it over and you, you just tie it in know. a knot and you pull you it. You clearly don't know. Okay. All right. We're done. We're done. <laughs> I'm going to go off and learn how to tie some ropes. <laughs> Catch you next week, everyone. See you guys. <laughs>